Assalamualaikum. This is our video assignment on invasive species. So, what is invasive species? Stay tuned! An invasive species is an organism that is not native to a particular area. Invasive species can cause a great economic and environmental harm to the new area. So, how does this invasive species can affect the ecosystem? First, some invaders can physically alter the habitat and cause destruction. Second, other invasive species may not destroy the habitat but may affect it by killing large number of other animals or endemic species. Third, invasive species also can affect human health then have an enormous economic cost. Now, let's move on to the example of invasive species. Well, it turns out that some of invasive species are very common and can easily be found. Some even is taken as pets. The first example are cats. Cats are invasive species because of their nature or behavior. They are a natural predator. This proves why your cats really love to catch cockroaches, mouse, or birds. Even domestic cats are responsible for the extinction of 33 bird species. This is what I mean when I say invasive species can cause harm to the ecosystem. Next, cats can also transmit disease. In 2014, 60% of domestic animals that contracted rabies are cats, which then can be spread to the local wildlife and humans. Again, it affects the ecosystem. Moreover, cats have rapid rates reproductions. As we can see in Malaysia, there are too many stray cats. One of the factors is because cats have rapid rate reproduction. Next, I'm going to talk about invasive fish species. One of the alien fish species menacing our rivers is the Mekong catfish, formerly known as the Ikan Patin Mekong. It's quite a favourite among local fish farmers with a soft, delicate flesh that makes it a popular restaurant menu item rivaling the local Ikan Patin. The problem with the Mekong catfish started when it was released from its captive culture into the wild. It is believed that some have been set free by hobbyists and escapes were also reported due to cage damage. For the Mekong giant catfish, this species is one of the largest freshwater fish in the world. Attaining an unconfirmed length of 3 meters, the Mekong giant catfish grows extremely quickly, reaching a mass of 150 to 200 kg in 6 years. In 2018, the Mekong giant catfish was caught at Lubuk Jong River in Kelantan. Meanwhile, for the Mekong red-tailed catfish, they can reach 80 kg and length with 130 cm. In nature, red tails of 30.5 cm are strictly predatory with half of their diet consists of other fishes, insects and even snakes. Mekong catfish which originates from the Mekong River, Thailand are devouring local species and may force some into extinction. This species could occupy all available space in the rivers because of its vociferous eating habit, rapid growth and high spawning rate. They may arrive in the country well contained, but once released into our streams, either deliberately or by accident, there's no telling where they might end up. Releasing Mekong catfish into a river is a big mistake. This will cause species like Bao will become extinct when the Mekong catfish multiplies. The best method to remove the fish was by using fishing techniques, especially baited traps. Once caught, the catfish should be removed from the habitat. Long lines or angling is also possible. Gill netting is the disfavor as other fish species may die. In particular, they adversely impact on biodiversity, including a decline or elimination of native species through competition, predation and the disruption of local ecosystems. Now I'm going to explain about one of the deadliest animals in Australia, the kintoots. Firstly, kintoots they are native to South America as well as Central America and they were first introduced in warm countries, especially in the eastern of Australia. They were first brought in Australia back in 1935 and they were used as a way to control the crow pest. Besides, they were also introduced to other countries as biological control agents for various insect pests as well as for other crows. 
Cantoots feeds on almost all of terrestrial animals or land animals, but they also compete with other native amphibians, basically for sources of food and breeding habitats. Did you know that the female Cantoots can lay up to 1,000 eggs each year? This is one of the cause of significant increase in the number of Cantoots in introduced countries. Every Cantoots have an amazing defense mechanism where they can produce toxic ooze. This ooze can act as a deadly defensive venom. These ooze are produced when Cantoots are provoked or when pressure is applied on the poison glands that are on the back of its neck. This ooze can cause illness and death as well as causing extreme pain if they were rubbed into the eyes. In addition, they were brought over in 1935 and the population soon increased exponentially in number and also extending their range towards Northern Territory as well as entering New South Wales. glands here which contain this toxin which none of our native animals seem to be able to handle. Native animals that feast on a cane toad rarely survive the meal. And that's it, that's, that's the, poison. the poison. When the animals get it on their gums, that's enough to cause them death in a fairly short while. The problem so. is these, uh, these poison glands you've got on the neck. And it's toxic at all stages. Ian and Graham are among thousands of volunteer conservationists who have spent years hunting cane toads at night, trying to stop the creatures from spreading across the country. When they've gathered up as many as they can find, they cull them as painlessly as possible using carbon dioxide. The effect of these cane toads had caused hundreds of native species of Australia to be pushed to the brink of extinction. It also caused devastating local species extinctions across Kakadu National Park in Australia. Besides the deadly adult cane toads, the eggs and tadpoles also contain enough poison which could kill fishes and frogs that eat them. The next invasive species is red eared sliders. The red eared sliders is originated from Mexico. These turtles can get quite large between 10 to 12 inch and are notoriously aggressive. They reach sexual maturity at young age and have high fecundity. Red eared sliders are well poised to be effective invaders. Next, they compete with native turtle species for food, habitat, and other resources. Moreover, red ear sliders have devastating impacts on pond ecosystem because they eat almost anything. Additionally, turtle race in captivity can develop diseases that are unfamiliar to wild turtles. Many measures can be taken to help limit the spread of invasive species. The most effective method is prevention. By carefully cleaning boots before transferring between different bodies of water, not releasing exotic pets into the wild, and planting garden with native species. Every living thing has evolved to play a specialized role within their ecosystem. In the ultimate balancing act, even one invasive species can drastically tilt the scales. If we stay mindful of our role in the spread of these organisms, we can prevent inventions before it is too late.